The one thing I've realized the older I get is I don't have near as much time as I would like to to spend outdoors hunting, fishing, uh, ice fishing in general. So what I have done as I got older is actually make my time away from home, away from work, efficient and as enjoyable as I can. So another thing that I like to do is organize, have a place for things and uh, to make my time out there efficient but also I have a four-wheeler like this and a trailer, an enclosed trailer so when I'm done and I don't have to spend a lot of time to unpack everything and put it away it has a place here in my rolling ice unit so I guess we're gonna do a little walk around and then show you the little things that I have done. So number one, if you're thinking about building uh, a setup similar to this, uh, start with a good platform, a four wheel drive ATV, preferably, I, you know, 300 CC or higher is my guess. This is 800, more than enough. I already had it, it's paid for. And what I did then was I'm a mixture of purchase things and then built things because there was nothing out there that I seen that would fit what I wanted to do with my machine. So I guess the first things first, uh, the things that I that I bought for the machine. Um, number one, this Plano ATV box. Um, I don't think they make this anymore, but the thing that I really loved about this unit is the fact that it is completely encased fully molded two-piece construction and it allowed for a lot of room on top so if i still wanted to strap something on top of it i could or if i wanted to look behind my unit to see what was going on i could easily do that um, a lot of the units that are out there now that you can purchase are big and bulky this thing is just the right size for what i need and i'll share with you what i have inside now so this is a simple design. It straps on, or I have actually U bolted on the back too on my on my rear rack extension. And yes, it is just tall enough to put extra electronics in here so they can stay dry. So I carry electronics, propane. I have a marine box which I can put tools in, or I actually have spare batteries for my aerator system. I've got an AquaView camera. I have uh, extra propane. Everything is protected in here. It stays dry. It stays out of the elements. It is not bulky. Another thing I bought was an auger carrier. Now I could have built one, but there's a few out there that I think just stand out. And the one that I really loved was the Excel Outdoors Jaws of Ice. So this unit actually just bolted right or strapped with U-bolts, U-clamps, right to my front bumper that I already had existing. This piece is actually extendable out and in, so you can set up exactly how you want this to clamp. But the one thing I really liked about this, it is extremely rigid and it is simple to open up. Quick pull of that and lower these straps. And all your carriers out. Now as you can see, I have my electric set up right now to stay really light, but I have a Jiffy Pro 4 and it mounts just the same on here as well. Very sturdy, very rigid, and uh, it's a great purchase. Have no endorsements for, they just make a good product. Not sure if they make it anymore because of the fact of the matter is there's just not a lot of ice fishermen and everybody likes to tinker stuff on their own, but this is a fantastic product. I love it and I recommend if you can get one to use it. My next investment that I put into my four-wheeler is definitely chains. These specifically are moose pro or a moose product uh, V-bar. So you can see they have chain, but they actually have V-bars. The V-bars go on the outside and enable you to have even more grip and stability in snow and straight ice where there was no snow cover. It'll allow you to hopefully not get stuck. These things will allow you to go almost anywhere. Deep, deep snow, there's no way around it. You almost have to have tracks. But down here in central and south central Wisconsin, where I'm from, where we don't have a ton of ice generally, we don't have a very long ice season, um, the ATV is probably the way to go. Uh, we don't get a lot of snow, so, we, so a snowmobile maybe isn't the exact use. Um, but I tell you, ATVs are 
very useful. Not a lot of waters around here allow you to run a truck. And if you can run a vehicle out on the ice, you can't use it for very long. So that's why I, I decided to go with the ATV build and uh, highly recommend chains. And if you're in a, an area where you don't get a lot of snow, but you have ice, I would probably recommend front and rear chains. So stock them into your local UTV ATV dealer and they can help you set you up for the size that you need and they can kind of show you probably how to install them. Now onto some things that I built for this unit. Um, I wanted to get a basket system in the front. Uh, last year I utilized um, file cabinets, file cabinet trays, but the new Frable Aqua or the Frable bait station here, the Magna bait station, it did not allow me to, fit, they don't fit in it. This, this unit does not fit in that system. So I had some, uh, some boards and some plywood available and the saws. So what I actually did was built to the dimensions that I wanted, made sure that it was still gonna fit. And a couple things that I changed was the, the, the height I had here, I actually had to put a block in here to keep this up high enough so it would fit because there's a groove, a ridge here. Another thing I did was built a thing for this to sit on top of my Humbird Helix 7 unit. So this unit I keep in my boat. I have waypoints for the for open water season and the winter season. And this is my GPS unit on the go. This is my fishing unit. This is my flasher, everything all in one. And with this being in front where I can easily see it, make adjustments, I can travel down the ice and still see where I'm going. I wanted to utilize a rod holder system. Now, I don't necessarily keep these on here all the time when I'm getting in and out of my trailer because the clearance of my trailer is pretty close to knocking the tips, but I wanted to utilize something so once I got fishing or got out here, I can put a spot, I have a spot for the rods that I'm gonna use for the day, whether it's uh, these for uh, dead sticks or <clears throat> tip downs or for jigging. Um, I have a little bit of everything, different presentations that I can quickly on the go, on the fly, uh, take off and go do different things and uh, that's what I use. Um, so all this is, and you can you, you could have used like a one by, like a one by two or a, a one by four, would have worked just fine, but I had the plastic laying around. And this is just PVC. I drilled a hole here to put a screw in and then I cut this at an angle so these go in real nice and easy and then I used a Dremel tool and actually Dremeled right there so that a lot utilized two places to screw in and this also doesn't ro roll around a whole lot so I can utilize that with all of my setups here and then I have a bungee system so if I was to get into some rough ice they're not going to bounce out and this bungee system and I'm not using my left hand, it's actually really slick. So that's what I've utilized for rods, and I have three on each side. There's things you can buy out there, but the gap is unnecessary. This is actually built exactly to how I want my box to be, and I didn't need to go buy them. PVC is extremely cheap, and I love building things, so that's what I did. Now remember I told you I had that issue last year where I would be pulling something, we had a lot of snow at the end of February, or at the end of January, and I would literally fill my sled up with slush, snow. I didn't want that anymore, so I wanted to get something up and off the ice, and this is what I did. I actually ended up purchasing the smaller sled, the, the Frable Recon, one man flip over, and then I used the dimensions of that sled to then build uh, a unit out of angle iron and inch and a quarter steel for my inch and a quarter receiver. Now yes, I could have bought a basket system that you can use for an ATV or a truck, but what I did, because this unit only has an inch and a quarter receiver, and I would have had to bought or built an adapter from that, and then still wouldn't have had something to the specs of my sled, I actually did a, a mock-up on a piece of paper, measured it out, and then went up to a, a steel supply facility and bought $60 for the steel. So this is a stick of inch and a quarter, uh, eighth inch thick material. And then I have a stick of inch and a quarter, uh, 
inch and a quarter square tubing that's the thicker material, the thickest that they make in that diameter for, this, for the weight that I thought I might have on it, which is actually a little overkill. I didn't have to go so heavy. And then the leftover stick that I have of the angle iron, I just put it uprights to keep it in there and I actually adjusted that as I went because if I decide not to use the sled at any time and wanted to use a hub shelter, this actually carries hub shelters out there as well. It doesn't roll off and I can bungee. And then I had steel grating on the bottom, which just allows for it to air out, dry out, as well as a great anchor spot if I wanted to strap things in. I built the, the back rack system off of the dimensions of my Frable Recon. Now, I don't fish out of a house very often. And in fact, if I'm gonna fish out of a house and I have a couple people with me, I like to utilize, I like to utilize that big hub system um, because you have so many holes, you can all be in one spot. I like the camaraderie that comes with being in one spot with a lot of people. But if I'm fishing alone or fishing maybe with a buddy that also fishes like me, utilizing the one man's, um, and if I had to pull his, I easily can pull his too. But I utilize my one man a lot. Um, the one thing I really like about the, the Recon is has that Plano trunk with the seat on top. So if I needed a seat or if I wanted my gear really safe and secure, I can put that loose gear in that Plano trunk and uh, I can utilize the rest of the sled for like my camera gear or if I wanted to go and fish for another species or my minnow bucket, um, tip ups. I got a variety of things that I can carry in here and then I will use uh, the supplied cover or uh, you know the cover for this unit to keep everything inside so I actually when I open it up I have a rod tube with my bro series rod in it I've got tip ups I've got my rod locker everything stays in here and it's very secure and inside my my uh, my tote I have my heater I have my tackle storage I have maybe a set of gloves that I want to keep dry. There's so many things that I can utilize in this to stay organized and it could stay in here so when I'm done fishing, I know where it's at if I need to run out and grab something quick. I don't have to put it all away after the fishing trip is over. Um, I've really liked my setup, how I have it. And now that we have some really comfortable temperatures and a good month of fishing yet, I'm ready to utilize it as best I can.